today I thought we'd just take a little stroll, Julia and I, down, um, well, Rowland Road, although we're starting in Montague Street in Worthing in West Sussex down on the south coast. Hello, Julia. Hello, Richard. Um, Everyone will get the postcard, you know, in a couple of days' time. Yes. Slip down the step. Oh, did it? <laughs> That's no good. Uh, is that what you did? Oh, I, did. I see what you said. <laughs> you slipped down the step. I did. It, I didn't twig. No. Um, the point of today's little stroll is to look at uh, the Victoriana, really, in Worthing, where we live, and the remnants of it. And this is, um, somebody actually said to me, I watch your videos avidly, but uh, I noticed in Worthing, where you occasionally do the walks, you, you haven't really gone down into the west side of Worthing, and this is the west end, I guess. It's a fair point. Um, and I thought, yes, actually, it's worth noting some of these buildings because, as you know, uh, England is changing. It's being developed, it's being changed. And in many ways, this is a document of... For posterity. Yes. To remember it all, to as it is it at the moment. So... Because it's not going to last like this for long. No, sadly. Although, hopefully, some of these old fine buildings are grade two listed, perhaps. And, um, and one so would hope. One would hope are going to be protected. So we're just going to take a, just a gentle stroll and see what we see and comment on what we... We're not experts by any means, really, but... No, not by a long shot. Uh, fortunately, it's quite um, quiet at the moment, although there was a wind blowing earlier. Um, here we're quite protected. So I'm going to turn the camera around and we'll just stroll and have a look and comment on what we see, shall we? Sounds like a plan. So I'm going to start over here on these two stop stop top i can't even say the <laughs> words can you say it top parts of the building no top style barbers is what i was actually trying to read oh right but yes. the building is um, a, a curious building isn't it mm, looking mm. above the modern hoardings always a good thing and you see the real building you see the real building or a and glimpse of it yeah and how it was um originally laid out with the dormer windows above and then as we come down heading west past the Rose and Crown. I've had a meal in the Rose and Crown a few times. Family meals with the children as they've grown up and had relevant uh, birthdays and things. Mm. I've barely been in any pubs in um, Worthing. No, I'm not, uh, it's true, I'm not a great pub goer uh, anymore, and I never was, other than when out and about walking. That's right, yeah. um, I've never been a, a town pub frequenter, you know, as in on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. I played my mandolin in two different pubs. Oh, have you? Yes, in, in, within Worthing. Now, we are being blasted by a bit of wind here. Um, this is a, I mean, a lot, there's a sort of a mixture between the end of the Georgian era, I suppose, or Regency, as everyone says in Worthing, and then the Victorian period. And this is a, this is Poland's. I don't think it's got anything to do with the country. This has been here ever since I've been in Worthing for 30 odd years. We've got some nice furniture in there. It is a lovely um, furniture shop and it's one of those sort of last independent shops that you have that you used to get loads of but sadly they're all disappearing now. Got a couple of nice teal coloured items in there. Uh, you do like your teal. I do, it goes nicely with purple. Absolutely. There's a Tex-Mex, I've been in there um, many years ago it's good to see these some of these businesses are still working <laughs> people ducking out of view here but these terraces look at the uh, i think they're called um the uh, core well i think they're dentils are they dentils those little um little line like of things feet. that look it looks like, like little clawed feet hanging down yes there. above what you know just before the the balustrade i suppose it is <laughs> um this, or balustrade this, this whole section down here looks quite interesting because you've got one stall here, then it goes to a terrace, you know, the bay window terrace of the uh, Victorians. Yes. And then it's got the, um, the the wood, the dark wood panelled, kind of mock tudor -ish Yes, the mock section. Tudor, which is probably a, a later addition. Because hmm. the Victor, I don't think the Victorians, now someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think the Victorians did much of um, the they mock Tudor. No, I think it's more in the 30s. They might have mucked up a few things, only a few things, <laughs> but they didn't mock up. Yes, exactly. And then going a little further, we come, this is the, the, the co-op now, but um, it's a sort of more modern block of flats. But if we cross over towards the Floral Cafe, we can look back at the old bingo hall in a minute. But the Floral Cafe, look at this beautiful old 
English shops, still retaining the shape of the English shops. I love the little windows above Those the door. Yes. Above the door. Let's go and have a quick little feast. This is a lovely looking cafe. It does say it's open. If we've got time, maybe we'll have a cup of tea in it afterwards. And then looking above, you know, people would have had those single rooms and lived above the shops, as indeed they probably do today, and have them as flats. Mm. I do like this street, sort of apart from the cars and things, because of these shops. And I think they filmed a bit of Wish You Were, Wish you were Here with Emily Lloyd and Tom Bell in one of the shops, used the shop fronts, because they're often used as period pieces. So this is the old bingo hall, and it still is. And I think at one time it was a cinema. Someone will correct me. It looks like it was very cinema. I think and it was a, a mecca as well, a mecca bingo or one of those quite things. A, quite a few bingo, you know, old, um, well, bingo halls were old little cinemas. Yes. So I, know, I know of a few examples in Portsmouth. Absolutely. Um, I mean, they've got the right sort of size, haven't they, once you've, because you've that big audience space. Yeah, that's right. That's we, the hall. We have in Worthing, as in a lot of places, a lot of um, charity shops. And of course, you know, places like this one behind us, St. Bernard's, interesting stuff. And these are the sort of places Julia and I love to frequent. Mm -hmm. um, love how they've displayed in this window here, in uh, Harlequin hair. <laughs> yeah, keep going. This um, beautiful poppy wreath on this uh, wooden Wiccan, a uh, wicker, not Wiccan, wicker corset. That's gorgeous. I wonder what the relevance of that is apart from the poppies. It's just yes. the poppies you couldn't wear that, do no, you think? No, that you wicker corset? No, you couldn't. And there's some wartime pictures down here because it's Remembrance Day coming up. Yeah, it's so, a really lovely display. Yes, made a real effort, which is lovely to see. It looks like they're celebrating the feminine side of the war as well. Absolutely, and why not? Because they're a beauty um, yeah, salon, aren't they? Exactly. And it's good to see that um, in this particular stretch, Roland Road that we're now in, very much is these small businesses, and that small businesses are thriving. And just as I say that, we go past an empty shop, <laughs> which is uh, always the way. Just to prove you wrong. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, there are plenty of these. Um, little shops and you know we as napoleon said about the english we are a country of shopkeepers and uh, i'm glad to see that that has still retained so i think these these shops are later we've maybe got facial uh new faces from the the 30s with all that mock stuff now i should be able to hear you from over there julia oh yeah you should i forgot i'm wearing a microphone probably means you heard more of the car as well. You what, sorry, I couldn't hear you, but they, the <laughs> audience probably could, because we're on radio mics. That's right. I just said it just might be that they heard the car, or the vehicle um, passing quite loudly well, as well. Yes, so should you. Um, and then of course you come up, um, as we go further away from all these beautiful shops, up towards um, a more office -y based type buildings. If I swing the camera around as gently as I can, Got more charity shops up this way as well. Brick built, but those windows look wrong, don't they? They do. And that's because There's I too think too many, uh, not enough panels in there. Yes. I'm going to step in front of a car here to get past and out of the sun. But yes, those windows would have been probably um, six lights, I think they call them, something like that. But underneath. Oh, like this one over there. Yes. Yes, here we go. I'll show you that in a second. I don't want to yeah. keep swinging the camera around. No, don't want to make people dizzy. Um, but what I like about this building, and I, I don't know when this is, probably 1901, something like that, turn of the century type thing. Um, I love the old hoardings that they had oh, up lovely. here. You know, you see that it's, it's faded now, but over the years there would have been a hoarding in there, you know, advertising, whatever it is. And, and I love the circular nature albeit with plate glass now, of this, what looks like a tool shop. It's a hardware store. Yes. Let the postman come by. So this building here is, it's got the windows. 
um, that we're talking about. It's got six, we're at two sets of um, six, so 12 panes. On a sash on window. On a sash window, exactly. So, um, yeah, so that's what they would have been. But, you know, when, when, then, when you see them right, you just, you just go, oh, yeah, I know it. Yeah. It's, it's correct. It looks and when right. you don't see them right, it, it, you may not notice it, but it's when you've it seen them right. It is slightly jarring, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So opposite now, if I move the camera in this way, here we go. Um, these buildings, obviously sort of townhouses that um, richer people would have lived in, but these are probably the end of the Georgian period, I would say, uh, beginning of the Victorian period. Still got that, but you can see the windows there have all been replaced, mm. but would have had similar sort of sets of sash windows, I dare say. But what I find interesting about this is the end one, look at the end one, it's still got the render, the original, it's not been painted not in fair. any way, which I just find weird in that Whoever's owned that over the years has seen everybody else have theirs painted and just not bothered, mm. which I just find peculiar. If they'd all been like that, I could get it, but you just think this person on the end has never painted. Now, whether there's a reason for that... Well, the only thing I can think of being a short person is it's quite tall building. Well, they've all but painted But everyone else them. has managed. But... Yeah, they've, I mean, it's unusual to see it in its absolute original state. That's really what I'm getting at. Yeah. Um, now, we get to another interesting stretch, I think, in Rowlands Road of real Victoriana. And I think it's along here that w one of the shop fronts was used in the film. And you'll see why, because it's just so beautiful. And what we'll do is we'll walk up and see an overview and then walk back and sort of look at it in more detail. So let's um, turn the camera around again and you'll see what I mean as we stroll along up here and um, we actually recorded this once and the camera went a bit wrong <laughs> when so we did I'm trying to remember what we said yes I'm sure I said something about these lovely iron railings exactly I was just going to say very that. ornate and lovely and yeah. it's quite rare to see them I find in this day and age they're, they're since, um, since, since they the war effort taken. that's it yeah they were all taken down so many of the iron railings and sometimes in the um, on the pavement at the in the gutter and the, what do you call this bit on the edge? Oh, the curb. The curb. Thanks. I don't know why every time <laughs> I turn the camera on, I can't think. Um, you often see little indentations or slots where they were. And, and sometimes you can still see the uh, the clamped or severed end of the iron yes. railing still wedged there in the ground, which is fascinating. Which is which is one reason why history is fascinating because. You don't always need to see all of the history. You just need to see a little bit of it. Just a little bit of evidence. Which tells you what was there. And then the imagination, I think, fills it in and does it very well. Mm. Rowlands Road goes on a little bit further, but it, um, there are some more houses. And anybody watching this will say, oh, you missed, you know, you missed our place. We're going to miss a lot of things. We're going to miss a lot of things, but we're going to stroll back. I just want to get, actually, there's a beautiful tree. Um, I'm trying to look at it to see if it's an oak tree or something. It's just in that colour of um, autumn, mm. which is rather lovely. And we'll just give you a view as you go down there. More Georgian houses and all looking very lovely. It's very resplendent in its autumn colours. But we just want to go back now and just examine those buildings because there's the ornateness of the English shops, which is one reason to document this, is because these days it's just big plate glasses, massive, horrible, nasty, plastic, neon um, signs, um, and you lose that sense of what there was once here. So I'm going to come this, this one's side. beautiful, really interesting, this one. The, ex the Explore History Shop, grand. Let's have a look in the window. The uh, ornate window up there. You can see how they're misshapen. They bow and they warp. Yes, they are definitely original, as in all of this. With the, mm. This must have been at the time when plate glass was first coming in, these big, expansive windows, which must have been at the time a, a bit of a novelty that you could now get more light into the shop. And, of course, the, the, the window shopper 
was born because they could come in and actually peer, at the goods. peer in and see what's going on. And this particular shop's got some amazing um, mm. memorabilia, which of course sets our um, interests alight. There's an old Avo, um, a, vo a voltmeter that my dad used to use, that type of thing. Old oil can. And then there, you've got a, a incredible weighing scales, but it's very difficult to see through because of the reflection. Mm, there's some geology pieces in there as well. But let's go and have a look at the doors and these pillars, because the pillars are absolutely, absolutely stunning. stunning. Look at that. I'll start at the top there. So it's like, um, I was going to say, a, I think a Corinthian, is it? That has the uh, flowers at the top. It's like that as you would get in stone and then you come down here to all this very ornate um, ironwork painted over the years. Mm. I'm trying to chase Julia, and she's <laughs> sort of keeping out of view. Um, and then you've got these uh, glossy tiles. Red brown tiles. They're quite classic as well, yeah. aren't they? A lot, of, a lot of places have that. And then they, they sort of, you know, the, the, I love that sort of um, titling on the window, the, the frosted glass, the Signum house. house. Pass it on, not quite as, uh, <laughs> as, as brilliantly ornate. But, but they've uh, also kept the yeah. beautiful ornateness of the These top. are probably protected, I should think. Yeah. They're probably not allowed One to do anything. One would hope, any... that's for sure. I wouldn't think they, they could. Um, and then we come round. So it was one of these with these pillars that was in the film. It must have been those ones, um, the two we just looked at, because this, although this one still has the pillar. These are actually nice. It's got both of them have got the names and numbers. But they've lost the. Um, yes, they may have. Of course, in the film, they may have put their own hoardings up. That's a good point. Because um, they can do that in films. Yeah, they do all sorts of stuff, don't they? Clever. They're very clever. So these are lovely, and then you've got the sort of the the flats above with these interesting, um, the um, balustrade at the top. There's carved tiles up there as well. Or, um, oh, yeah. See what I mean? Yeah, all of that done thanks to the Industrial Revolution um, and the, the power of what we can do. And, of course, this sort of stuff was passed around the world, and then we have a government at the moment that wants to pay reparation for actually bringing wealth and communication and money to other parts of the world, civilization and sophistication. Oh, we didn't mention these tiles. Oh, Look at wow. these tiles down here. We were too busy looking up. Look at all that. Lovely. See, it's so rare to see this kind of thing. Um, and it's very easy to take it for granted, I think. Absolutely. Um, as you go about your shop, especially when you live somewhere. I mean, if you live somewhere with a bit of history, and you live there, you just see it every day, and I think... It becomes just a part of the background, Yeah, it? and it's not until you travel to other parts of um, the country and you realise some parts of the country have less of it mm -hmm. and that it's disappeared, and oh. that is the sad part. Some more ornate tiles here. Beautiful leafy ones. It's very Art Deco, isn't it? Yes, I don't know this sort of period. Again, this must be end of Victorian. There's a, a leaf up there, I don't know if that's a Corinthian leaf. Mm. And of course there's some scaffold up there which means they're working on the roof. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they've got slate roofs or whether they're tiled, mm. which would be interesting to, to know. I wonder what that, what that place is meant to be. Is he like the green man? Well, his beard it does look a bit oak leafy, but I don't think it is the green man. Let's see if I can get another shot of him. Or Father Time, or or something. There's um, there's more of these tiles, and much more here. Oh yeah, they're much better preserved in a better preserved state. I don't know what it is. I just have to touch them. Yeah, no. <laughs> See something pretty in in tile. And it's, tile, it's I have in to relief, touch. isn't it? It's not just mm. flat. It's actually mm. in relief. Lovely. And there's different ones down the bottom there as well. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. I just got to get get down there to see them. And another shop full of antiques and memorabilia, which we do so well in this country. I guess because we have so much of it.
Mm. Well, Julia, that was our little stroll down Rowlands Road and a bit of Victoriana in Worthing down by the seafront. And this is the sort of thing that it, we're just losing it in this more modern world. But I think for a seaside country, a seaside town in, town in our country should be preserved. And even if you were making new stuff or were throwing a hint to it in modern design, this is the sort of stuff that you should be doing on a seaside town, not turning it into some suburban um, in a London type town. Sterile. Which, yeah, bland and boring. So, you know, message to future architects. Take Keep note. our seaside towns lovely. Anyway, thank <coughs> I'm losing, I'm, <coughs> I've lost uh, my throat it's went dry then. Yeah, no, it went completely dry, I couldn't talk, um, which is unusual. <laughs> so thank you for watching this and we will catch up and see you again on another one. Anon. Until then, bye-bye.